Do you need to discover OT assets across network boundaries at scale? I'm Ralph Langner and in this video I'll show you how active probing technology can dramatically reduce your investment. If you have already looked into OT asset discovery solutions, you may have identified two distinct issues and there are both related to cost, deployment cost, maintenance cost, lifetime cost. The first issue is if you are operating very small subnets like for pipeline pumping stations or water treatment facilities where you only have a handful of PLCs and RTUs in the network, the cost of deploying a dedicated network monitoring appliance may just be prohibitive. And the second issue is if your corporation operates a huge number of subnets, like hundreds or thousands of process networks, then again, the, the hardware-based um, appliance-based solution just doesn't scale. It might be prohibitively expensive when you think about cost of deployment and cost of maintenance. Let's take a look at this simplified sample network architecture, which is representative of many contemporary production environments. So we are looking at a couple of different subnets. Some of them are connected via router, others are connected uh, via dual home servers. And at the bottom, you even see two Ethernet IP subnets, which are connected to LAN 3 via an Ethernet IP capable PLC. If you wanted to discover assets in all of these subnets using passive scanning, you might have to install a dedicated monitoring appliance in every single subnet. However, that is not even the complete story because if you think about the appliances in the lower Ethernet IP subnets, or in the appliance in LAN 3, they would not be able to pass the configuration data that they have discovered to a central server because they cannot route their traffic through the PLC or through the dual home server. In other words, what you would also need to do is install a dedicated discovery network to which all of these appliances or at least some of them are connected. Now let's look at the alternative scenario where we use selective probing instead. Selective probing is software based, which means you don't need appliances in the first place because the selective probing service can be run on a given hardware such as the Windows server or such as a, an engineering station. Why is that possible? Simply because active probing is small footprint it can run it can coexist with existing applications like um, an engineering application so you don't need dedicated hardware appliances and also this is possible because the probing process might just take hours it doesn't matter whereas opposed to and a passive scanning, you need to be able to process real-time network traffic from all stations. This is not the case for selective probing and therefore in our example the only thing we would need to do is to install the selective probing service on for example this dual homed server uh, between LAN 1 and LAN 3. So why is this possible? Because the selective probing server can use routing to access uh, LAN 2 as an example via the router. It can also access the servers in the DMZ also using the router in between. But, and now it gets especially interesting, it can even <clears throat> access and discover all the devices in the Ethernet IP subnets at the bottom because it supports Ethernet IP or SIP route browsing. Now let's see what that looks like in real life. What you see here is the client application, the configuration client for the OT based asset discovery module. The module itself that does the discovery is in implemented as a Windows service that is configured using this client application that you see here. 
In real life, you only use the configuration client once when you set up the configuration. And then afterwards, the configuration that you have defined will be executed automatically every 24 hours, resulting in fresh configuration data that is then passed to the OT base asset center. So the screen we are looking at uh, tells us that in this network here, the, all the devices that you see here have been discovered. And I can see additional data on those devices in the right pane if I click any of these in, on any of these entries here. But that is not what you're interested in right now. So what we want to do is we want to define a remote network and then probe that remote network. In order to do this, first we click on Network Settings and add our new network to the list. So what you can see here is a couple of networks that are directly attached to the host machine where asset discovery is running on. And then we also see um, an, a SIP routed connection. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But now let's add a remote network. Okay, so when we now select this entry, we can further configure the probing for this remote network. And we start doing that by providing a name, which makes our life a little bit more easy. My first routed network. And now let's go through the various protocols that I can use for my probing. ARP cannot be enabled for routed networks because ARP is a layer two protocol that cannot be used on routed connections and therefore I cannot even enable it. In order to identify IP addresses and devices in that remote network and uh, we use ICMP in this case. And if we wanted to, we could a rate limit ICMP if you're concerned about uh, flooding the network or that uh, some legacy devices might have trouble with uh, uh, a higher number of IP, excuse me, ICMP packets, packets we could just um, turn down this rate. Then uh, we want to enable SNMP, we want to use WMI and we set specific credentials for this network. Uh, we don't use SSH because uh, we are pretty confident that we don't have any Linux or Unix machines in that network. We cannot enable Profinet because again, Profinet needs layer two access, but we can use Siemens S7 probing, Modbus and Ethernet IP. So let's click on OK. And that's pretty much it. Now, if we open the network list of available networks for probing. Our routed network appears in that list. So we select this network and then simply click on probe. So let's quickly check out the results. In our remote network, we have discovered one, two, three, four, five these devices, and uh, we can inspect further detail just by selecting any of these devices. So for example, right here, we are looking at a Siemens S7-412, and uh, we can also check out the peripherals in, uh, that are connected on the backplane. Uh, we see any 
uh, profile bus peripherals. We see the firmware version and so on. Um, if we inspect this Windows desktop that was uh, probed successfully using the Windows management instrumentation, we get a, a good idea of the software that is installed on this computer, including all the security patches. And this is how it goes. But uh, this is just uh, to verify that the probing results are correct. And uh, we would do further analysis of configuration data in OT based asset center. So just to sum this up, and the, the configuration data that we see here comes from a remote network that is not directly connected to our hosting machine. And that network might be 100 miles away. It might even be on a different continent. And this is possible via routing. So if, if you can access that remote network using TCP IP routing, then you can also probe the devices in that network. Now let's take a look at SIP routing. This is a little bit different from TCP IP routing. SIP routing uh, is used by OT based asset discovery. Once that you uh, that you have devices um, in Ethernet IP networks, and if those devices do connect to further networks like behind the PLC, then you can also inspect those remote SIP networks using SIP route browsing. In our example, we see that we have that, that OTBase has discovered a remote SIP network for this particular controller. So um, at this device, um, there is a controller with, uh, with an Ethernet connection in the third slot. And then uh, we can further drill down into that network using our probing. In order to make it a little bit, bit more transparent, first we add a name, SIP routed network. And again, let's quickly go through the settings, through the protocol settings here in this pane. As you can see, we cannot enable ARP or SIP or SNMP. And for a very simple reason, you cannot use any of these protocols via SIP routing. But um, Ethernet IP is enabled by default. And the one thing that I could change is I could uh, set a different timeout or rates per second uh, in order to avoid flooding my controller uh, with network packets, etc. Uh, just keep in mind this uh, all this this probing action is only executed once every 24 hours, and uh, after that probing run, it discontinues un until the next scheduled run or uh, until you um, trigger a probing uh, manually. So um, let's just set this name and then we can select the network in our list there we have it the sip routed network and what you see here is that there is a default entry in here and this is the device that does the routing so that appears as a default and now we can probe this network so we can inspect all the uh, other devices on the other side of the PLC in the remote network. So now we see the result. The, we have identified one other device in that remote network and there actually is only one other device because this is just a very small test network. In your um, environment, it could be hundreds of devices that are identified behind uh, an Ethernet IP capable PLC. And in our case, it's just this one de device. And we can again verify the correctness of the data. This all makes sense. In production use, you would only use the OT based asset discovery configuration client, as the name implies, to configure asset discovery on the various nodes that you have installed. And that is pretty much a one time operation. 
After that, configuration results are automatically transferred to OT Base Asset Center every 24 hours. And uh, this is how it looks like in Asset Center. So you see a couple of the devices that you have seen before in the configuration client. As an example, let's check out this Siemens PLC that we have seen earlier by just clicking on Profile. And uh, this is how it looks like in Asset Center. So all the configuration data is nicely arranged and uh, you can get further information by just clicking on any of these hyperlinks. And I see the network connectivity. I see the switch that it is connected to. I see the known vulnerabilities and a configuration history that is automatically maintained. As another example, let's check out the Rockwell PLC that we have seen earlier. And again, you see a nice uh, breakdown of all the uh, of all the modules that are installed on the backplane. Now here is the best part. If you are interested in uh, checking out asset discovery in remote networks in your own environment, you can actually start doing that today by downloading the evaluation version of OT based asset discovery from our website. So on langner.com, you go to downloads, OT based asset discovery evaluation, and then you scroll down to this form where you supply all your data and then just click on download. And afterwards you get the installation package that you install on any uh, PC running Windows 7 or higher, and then you can start probing.